real happenings in West Africa are posting worrisome situations across the continent with the emergence of coups in the West African sub-region. Burkina Faso is the latest to have experienced a coup d'etat where some military men took over power from a democratic government. The upheaval in Burkina Faso comes after a sudden military takeover in Mali and Guinea in less than two years, in which democratically elected presidents were humiliated by the military. The military also wrestled power in Chad last year after President Idris Deby died on the battlefield against Islamist insurgents in the country. The new turn of military incursion in politics is bringing back previous experience when the African continent was riddled with constant coups and military leadership. A period of human rights violations, corruption and lack of democratic institutions of governance for the people. Ironically, the armies in the Sahel region where these coups have taken place are said to have suffered heavy losses at the hands of Islamist militants who control some parts of these countries and have instituted harsh versions of Islamic laws on the residents. The economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, has been responding adequately to the new developments, but with limited results to compel change in the system of government. Despite the support the body has received from the European Union, the United States of America and France, its decisions and sanctions have been met with firm resistance by the various junta. These new events, however, have raised silent questions as to why is cool becoming fashionable in the West African region. These new trends of events, however, have raised silent questions as to why is cool becoming fashionable in the West African region. Are there external backing for these coups? What then are the supposed implications for this illegal process of taking over power? And how can ECOWAS handle these to stem the rising wave of coups in the West African region? These are some of the important issues that will be discussed on today's Lens on Africa. Stay tuned with us.